Hi there, and welcome to my beginner's guide for Perispera, the terraforming simulator playing on Mars. I'm Icon, and this video shall guide you around the first few steps on Mars and how to play this game, also giving a nice little review for people who are interested how this game plays out. I will um, play in the sandbox mode and I'm going to talk about how it works and uh, yeah, we're going to get right through this. So from the storytelling point, you're playing an AI which uh, has the mission to uh, terraform Mars. So we start out with uh, selecting a landing site and um, first up, you want to select a uh, area which is uh, pretty good to build on, like uh, this cratery area. These cratery areas aren't that good. And if areas are too low, you get the warning here of a flood zone, which basically means once we do our job well, there's going to be water here. So I'm um, going to be starting out here. You, of course, might select whatever place you want. If you're playing the campaign mode, um, the first uh, starting point will be selected for you anyway. So let's get started here. And um, yeah, the landing site is our uh, first um, contact on the surface of Mars. So What's really fun about this game is uh, the, the topography map is pretty cool and it features a lot of uh, fictional uh, landmarks as well as uh, realistic ma uh, landmarks I've, I've discovered here, Curiosity Rover. So um, it's really, really cool to see all these uh, actual things and uh, see how... Uh, <laughs> how astronomy uh, does the magic. Okay, so here's our uh, first landing site. So to do terraforming, well, that's a long, long process. And uh, to begin this, we need to acquire resources. Here in the panel, you see the raw resources, and here you see the intermediate products we work with. We um, see here on the planetary display, several deposits which uh, need to be acquired. So the first, um, kind of um, mine you want to b uh, build is the aluminum mine. Aluminum is one of the most uh, important basic materials to start with. So the white circle you see here is your um, zone of influence. Every new building complex needs to be in that zone of influence or your uh, little robots won't be able to transport uh, goods there. So you see here, here's our first uh, worker doing his job. So we're going to speed up and uh, wait until the aluminum mine has been constructed. So first uh, the uh, materials will be deposited by the uh, workers and then the building process is uh, continuing on its own. So as we see here now, a few things have changed. First up, five units of power will be used more to mine out that aluminum. And apart from that, we also now produce aluminum. So. If we check out what kind of uh, basic materials we'll need next, um, you can read this uh, chronological. Like uh, first you need aluminum, then you need the silicon. Silicon and aluminum are basically, um, well, the, the bare necessities of your colony. So as you see here, um, we are able to construct a mine there, but it's outside or, of our uh, power network or control network. So therefore, I'm just going to be uh, putting down a solar farm here, connecting these. So you see here, the yellow borders are also your, um, well, your, your, your energy borders, I'd say. So let's connect these areas here and uh, keep going. So the solar farm uh, requires a few things which we're not producing right now, electronics and glass. And uh, glass is the first intermediate product which we will produce. And uh, that's happening in the glass kiln factory. So uh, that's the next part. All these things um, are a part of the base campaign as well. But uh, like I meant, um, like a, I, I felt like that was all too segmented and not uh, introduced properly in a really good, uh, in a good sequence for me. So the glass kiln is uh, being produced now. Same procedure as I mentioned before. First they deposit the uh, materials there and then they're good to go. Okay, I'm also building a solar farm here because I feel like we definitely will need a little bit more power. But as you might notice there, um, we don't have any glass. The glass kiln also um, increased the zone of control, so um, now we are building the silicon mine. Now the silicon and the, um, 
The silicon will be put into the glass kiln and then the new materials will be transported to the solar farm. Um, transport of materials is always uh, happening with worker robots. And if you click the materials here, you can also see demands and stockpiles. And uh, you can also here um, decide how um, materials should be allocated. Constructions and upgrades, special projects and manufacturing of new uh, drones. Sometimes it is necessary to uh, manipulate a little bit around here, but uh, most of the time it ain't. So um, here now we're basically just waiting for um, the materials to be produced because um, we're suffering a slight shortage of glass. This takes a little bit longer. So basically we're just now waiting for um, the silicon and the glass to be produced. So I'm gonna pause this record uh, for a sec until this uh, solar farm has been produced. Be right back. So now that these things have been dealt with, we need to uh, check out our next uh, factories. So the next really important thing to do would be the steel factory. The steel factory um, produces um, steel out of iron and carbon. So uh, acquiring the uh, iron and carbon uh, deposits down here is mandatory. So let's see. Um, the carbon mine is uh, conveniently uh, lying in my vicinity here. And uh, same goes for the iron mine. So it's pretty simple as long as these uh, white circles uh, connect, your uh, worker robot will be able to deposit there. If not, you need to build something in between which closes those white circles basically. So um, the mines are being produced rather quickly, needing only a few units of steel and aluminum. And uh, since now I have produced the necessary uh, basic materials, I dare to drop down the steel factory as well. So steel and glass are now um, available as uh, man materials uh, to work with, which are basically the, 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 the utmost, um, the raw basics to get a proper colony going with that. After that, um, we need to acquire new workers because uh, one worker bot will uh, never be enough to uh, terraform an entire pl uh, planet. To do so, we need a electronics factory, which will transform silicon and aluminum into electronics. Since we already own both of these materials, I don't see any problem of putting up a electronics factory. Always keep in mind that you ne will need power and uh, always uh, take care that um, your buildings are lying within the power um, areas. As we see here, you can uh, also check these circles by using these buttons there. You can have a traffic network, power, maintenance, we're gonna explain that in a minute, scanning and weather also in a sec. So we're only supporting what's inside these circles. So right now everything is fine and uh, let's see. Every uh, piece of uh, machinery is now up and running. We're producing our own electronics. The only thing I still need would be parts. Parts will be made out of steel and aluminum and uh, it's all fully automated and easily working once you know which parts uh, go together. So with all these things now up and running, we're already uh, out of power again. So let's place down yet another solar farm. And um, I'm gonna put that down in uh, this vicinity because there's a uh, second water deposit already uh, visible there. Um, you will need to acquire more and more resources later down the road and therefore, well, it's uh, always a good idea to aim your expansions into directions where you're um, headed anyways. So we're going to upgrade the power with that. And uh, as you notice, things are progressing a lot quicker now. And the last part necessary for our expansion now will be um, a worker factory. Workers will be produced in this factory, but this factory also needs um, 15 units of power, so I wanted to uh, set up a solar farm first. Since I do want to, this solar farm finished before uh, the worker factory is being finished, I prioritized it now with this button here. Our worker will now uh, drop materials first into, uh, into this uh, construction side and uh, not into the other. So there we go. 
just waiting for um, the last pieces of electronics. But while we're waiting for these, I'm going to explain the um, worker hub. The worker hub offers you a new slot where um, a, a worker can be parked. So um, your landing site um, this year is already uh, working as a um, as a worker hub and a uh, solar panel at the same time. So worker hubs also um, act as a recharging station for your workers. So um, put down your worker hubs in areas which are um, well as far away as possible from your starting area to maximize their um, zone of effect, I'd say. So I'm putting down two new worker hubs here. And uh, now we are going to prioritize the worker factory and uh, put up to 16 uh, speed. And um, yeah, let's uh, hope those electronics will be produced any moment. To, uh, here you see with only one worker, um, the workload is really distributed badly. And uh, I'm going to pause uh, yet again until all these uh, structures have been uh, dealt with. Be right back, friends. All right, so now the uh, hubs have been um, built, and as we see here, two of three workers have room here. Um, one has been already uh, finished during the construction of the third hub. And uh, now the worker factory will start producing new workers for our um, colony. Um, since the worker factory will only be producing um, workers while there are new um, slots for um, while there are free spaces in uh, at hubs, it's uh, highly um, recommendable to just shut down the worker factory whenever you don't need um, its services. Right now it's building another worker, but we're going to shut it down once uh, that worker has been produced. So there's one more thing we need to take care about, and that's maintenance. So the weather on Mars is uh, pretty harsh and uh, puts a pretty heavy wear and tear on... Uh, the buildings here. So as we put down a maintenance, you see this white circle, that's going to be the circle where maintenance will repair um, buildings. And as you see here with the white dots, that's uh, the amount of damage they already suffered. Um, a where was it again? A maintenance facility though needs polymers. Polymers are um, being produced by harvesting chemicals at the chemical plant and uh, producing or refining them at the polymers factory, but I guess that was uh, quite expectable at this point. So I'm putting the uh, farm and the uh, chemical or well, the mine and the factory um, as close together as possible because I always feel like uh, that's beneficial. And also I wanted to show you that um, here, the parts factory, I got 57 parts on reserve. I'm just going to deactivate that for now because I don't feel like we need all the um, all these items and it will save aluminum which can be uh, used at other uh, points because at the early stages of the game you almost never have enough aluminum or or, or here electronics uh, or whatnot there's always some materials uh, where you're suffering a certain shortage and uh, therefore shutting down your facilities during the early game is a pretty advisable and uh, useful strategy like uh, here the worker factory I'm gonna shut it down now and uh, it nets me in a lot of uh, free power and I'll just uh, reactivate it when uh, I see the need for that so the polymer factory is uh, ready before the chemical plant so let's prioritize the chemical plant for a sec. And uh, you can also prioritize um, certain buildings. Like uh, in this scenario here, I'm noticing that my electronics stockpile is pretty low. I can also um, prioritize the electronics factory. And now all worker bots will try to deposit the aluminum as quick as possible in here to create new uh, electronics um, quickly. So prioritizing does uh, do a lot of neat things for you. So now we're also refining polymers. That's happening by combining chemicals with carbon and uh, now it does make sense to place down a maintenance facility so I'm just uh, taking care to um, 
make sure that it's going to sit at the right spot. And let's speed up once more. I really like the 16, uh, 16 times speed up uh, um, option because that really helps a lot during those uh, waiting um, phases. So now polymers are uh, being produced and deposited here. Also, I noticed that a lot more work is getting done uh, with three workers. I haven't full. Uh, I haven't uh, made up my mind uh, as of yet how many workers a uh, colony should uh, perfectly have. Well, it's hard to tell. Okay, so uh, now we're uh, building the maintenance facility. The maintenance uh, robots will need polymers and electronics, and um, they will be um, consumed while repairing. So the maintenance facility will constantly need electronics and polymers um, to repair um, stuff. So therefore, we notice here, we, we um, you might already have noticed that we always never have enough aluminum. So therefore, increasing your um, resource income is quite um, necessary. And that happens with the areological scanner. A areological scanner will start to uh, scan out the grid here. But don't you worry, its actual range is way uh, higher than these blue cells uh, might indicate. So um, the scanner does scout out new um, deposits for you. And also it does uh, scan out the environment um, of the planet. So yeah, that's quite fun. And now we're almost ready for the last part of this beginner's guide, and that's constructing the spaceport and uh, hosting actual humans on this planet. But before we can do that, we need to uh, set up accommodations for those humans. So water extractors, a water extractor, much more is important, and we also need to put up a food factory. Food is being produced out of water and chemicals, so uh, this is uh, a very, very vital um, infrastructure. Um, to house humans and as we see here I'm uh, growing I'm running out of power again and uh, therefore I'm going to shut down the maintenance facility for a moment and uh, we're gonna create a solar farm and let's check out where do I want to expand my power preferably into the vicinity where I'm uh, building that scanner maybe because I feel like that will be definitely uh, some place where where there's going to be action in the near future. And now we're going to pause for a moment until these new building projects are completed. Be right back. All right, so now the areological scanner has been completed and let's uh, watch how this uh, bad boy works. So this machine here does now scan um, segments on the map and it will now look for um, interesting things uh, to discover there. When there's uh, some um, deposit of minerals or anything like that, I will uh, be notified. So after all these things have been set up, I have now um, created another solar farm back here to be sure that I have enough power. One thing I forgot mentioning about solar farms, you are also receiving a readout about the uh, efficiency of that uh, solar panel in person up here. So uh, here it's 95%. But uh, down here, we only get 90%. So there are regions which are better for um, solar farming than others. But uh, I just wanted to make sure to, to uh, mention that. So now also what has happened is the water extractor and the food factory are online and running. So the last thing we need now is a colony where actual human beings can live and a spaceport. The spaceport is uh, the staging point for all the um, bigger special actions um, in the game. And um, people will land here, you can issue special projects there, and uh, a lot of uh, exciting things are, po are happening there. So let's uh, speed up yet again. So the scanner now, as we see here, does ju just does its job. And... Um, I'd strongly recommend starting uh, to invite human beings only after you're uh, starting to create food and water because um, humans are quite dependent on these materials. 
Um, the uh, AI in this game is not so much, but uh, human beings are. So the spaceport needs uh, quite a lot of materials, so it's one of the bigger uh, projects. The colony uh, is housing up to 100 people. You can also uh, build research outposts, but uh, to build research outposts you must discover um, ruins on the planet first. So there are several areas here as well, which will be explained while you're playing, so I'm not gonna spoiler the fun here. Um, so we're now just um, scanning that thing and you can of course uh, spread more scanners across the planet you see here the amount of uh, areas you have scanned and how many areas how many scanners you have online and as usual the electronics are the only um, part that are missing so I'm gonna be right back after a short break all right so now the last piece of electronics is being produced and after that the spaceport can be constructed and uh this is basically the last building we need to uh finish our uh, tutorial procedure and uh with the construction of the spaceport we're now able to issue uh special projects and uh special projects are um for example inviting human beings so we're pressing now on this button and uh you see here that's all the uh special projects the game has to offer unlocking a lot of areas and the first is uh, the colonist migration you just add that and uh then the people will be uh first preparing um their resources on earth so um Let's head back to our uh, actual place. There are several things uh, on the planet happening, like uh, weather phenomena and such things, but we're more interested in well, with that. So um, now we're gonna be, uh, we have to wait yet again until the construction here on Earth has been finished and uh, after that bar has been done, they're gonna, um, there's gonna be another bar of the people uh, moving towards here, so you thought it, you already might have thought it, we're gonna be right back in a sec. Alright, so um, the arrival of these people at Mars is now imminent, and that's gonna be the, uh, well, more or less the last thing we'll do in this uh, tutorial, at least in-game. So with the colonists arrival, we are now unlocking the science menu. And that's where the fun uh, really begins. The people on this planet will produce research points per month as long as you're um, providing them with the necessary things. So research is uh, tiered in uh, several um, levels as we see here and we get uh, to choose between engineering, space technology and biotech. So if you want to check out what's up with that tech just click it. So um, roughly said engineering provides you new um, uh, means to uh, harvest materials, to store um, energy, to create energy, to uh, do new logistic um, options, but most importantly it also helps you to increase the building limit, because uh, there is actually a limit to the buildings. And at the space research we can research additional landing sites, but also um, we get to research extra spaceports, and here, this is all the tech we need for terraforming, like uh, really crazy stuff like uh, colliding one of the moons into Mars. I love that. Can't wait to do this. Biotech, therefore, is uh, increasing uh, the colony qualities or uh, I'm creating more um, or tossing black polar dust into the atmosphere to reduce the planet's albedo. Um, it also you're also featuring um, technologies that increase the maximum colonist limit. So I'll just start with the wind farms and uh, I'll just say I'll, it's uh, up to you at this point where uh, we're headed from there. Um, in the waiting time I put up a new aerological uh, scanner here and uh, some new uh, farm. So I also discovered one unknown abandoned facility. These are undocumented little um, colonies on Mars and uh, this game is at least uh, playing in the 22nd century. They, I haven't found out in which time it really plays, plays but um, what I wanted to show is uh, these sites are what you need for research outposts. So. That's that. Alrighty, friends, but uh, what's happening from this point on is uh, completely up to you. You can uh, go for these uh, new uh, 
sector unlocking uh, missions or uh, well it's uh, there's a lot of things to do terraforming Mars is only one of them exploring the planet is another and uh, yeah I hope that gave you an overview about what the game has in store I really really enjoy what I'm doing here and I can't wait for more action for that so feel free to leave a comment down below if there are any questions drop them down below if there's anything you think I totally should have said also do that leave a like leave a subscribe if you want to support the channel or the project i'd be delighted if you did so whatever might be the case have a wonderful time and see you soon bye bye